I created sort of my ultimate fantasy uh, foodie suite. So you don't want to escape food even when you're sleeping. <laughs> no, I, I, as you can see, I, I dream food. I mean, I thought, just for example, I created these pillowcases, and I thought, if, if I'm designing my own room and I can do anything I want, wouldn't it be fun to lay your head down on a giant bag of marshmallows? You'll be looking up at this. You know, some old hotels and motels have cottage cheese ceilings? Yes. So I thought it would be fun to have a Swiss cheese ceiling. <laughs> this is like my Swiss cheese canopy. Fitting for the man known as the surreal gourmet to show Gladstone guests that whimsy, design tricks aren't just for kids. Bloomer collaborated with local artist Fausta Faciponte to create these comfort food caricatures. Some do double duty. I travel half the year, and so I stay in a lot of hotels, from high-end to low-end hotels, mostly low-end hotels. <laughs> a lot of cookie-cutter hotels. And, you know, they're very functional, but when you're sitting in a cookie-cutter hotel room, you're, I'm always thinking to myself, gosh, you know, they could just do A, B, and C, and it would make it so much more hospitable. And so I've tried, I've done A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, <laughs> all the way down. And down to every detail. Bloomer scavenged Toronto markets to help fill the room and even built some of the pieces himself. And then here, this is my, my little dining area. So just two basic stools and then this little tabletop because there's not very much space in the room. I have to be efficient. But at the same time, I want uh, the guests of the room to know that if they prepare something in the kitchen, that there's actually a comfortable place that they can sit down. A little retro microwave oven, a panini maker, my favorite knives which really are the knives that I use at home. A great little refrigerator. Mm -hmm. You walk into a hotel room and you usually have one bottle of red and yeah. one white, so you don't, your only choice is red or white. So here I have five of my favorite reds, and then in the refrigerator there's five of my favorite whites, including an ice wine, which I call it belly button wine, for nefarious <laughs> reasons. We won't go into right now. I feel like this, you want this to be the party, party suite in the hotel. I want people to live, to live <laughs> yeah. large, you know? Yeah. But that's how I live when I travel and I'm interested in food. And when I go to a new city, for me, it's all about the food. And so I want that experience to start right here in the room. Bloomer gives our city credit for some of his most vivid food memories. I moved to Toronto um, just when the Bamboo Club was exploding. And I remember going there and having these crazy shrimp chips and pad thai and flavors that no one had experienced in this town. Mm -hmm. But Toronto is so multicultural that That's there are... That's the edge we have, I think. You totally do, and there's so many different types of cuisines too. It's not just fine dining, you know, there's, you can, I mean, on Ossington there's everything from amazing pizza to uh, last night I had um, some fantastic laksa, mm -hmm. you know. What's laksa? Laksa is like a coconut uh, noodle soup. Um, I think it's from Indonesia. Mm. Food and design are just two of Bob Bloomer's life passions. He's also an ambassador for Second Harvest. It's a pretty amazing operation, and last year they rescued about 9 million pounds of food, all of which would have been thrown out. So I, I'm, I'm so passionate about that model. It just makes such great sense. 9 million you know? pounds of food. Yeah. That's incredible. And only 50 cents to feed someone. In room 403 atop the Gladstone Hotel, the goal is to feed the senses. There's so many great things in here, we forgot there's actually a bathroom. A giant donut. <laughs> you people are going to leave fatter when they come to this room. Please don't eat the donut when you go to the bathroom. It takes you back to your childhood, but it's still very adult, which I like. It was, I was trying to walk that fine line. Yeah. Always in life. Always Probably. in life. That's a good way to do it. That's a good way to do it. It's my dream room because I believe that um, when you're designing something, if, if you are passionate about it and you, and you love what you're doing, even though I might be doing it for myself, I know that that's going to create the, the best guest experience. Bloomer's room isn't, shall we say, a flash in the pan. It's a permanent installation at the Gladstone Hotel. Is it kind of cool to have a dish that will last forever? It's, it's extremely cool and very gratifying. I feel really lucky to have had the opportunity to create this room.